And practicing non-knowing intimacy with self. Who am I with relation to this body? Who am I with relation to mountains and rivers and sky? <clears throat> so we're working on the first of our three areas of non-knowing practicing intimacy with self. Okay. <clears throat> so the root koan, the root question for this practice is who am I? And last week we looked at the root koan, who am I? And we also looked at one of the, the trunks or the boughs of the tree that come up from the root koan of who am I? It's a question of what am I seeking? Or why am I going where I'm going or doing what I'm doing? Okay. Bodhidharma answered when he was asked, who are you? He answered, I don't know. When Hogan was asked, why are you traveling around to different places? What are you seeking? He said, I don't know. So those were two manifestations of a certain deep question which was met with great intimacy in this not knowing. <clears throat> with these questions, we have varying levels of depth of our response, right? So just with these two, for example, somebody asks you, who are you? Or you ask yourself, who am I? And you answer, well, I'm a teacher living in Boulder, I'm 58 years old, make this much money, family, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. The motivation question, you know, why did you come here tonight? Well, this uh, session was an, announced on Meetup, and it said it was at 6, so I came at 6. <laughs> okay. So that level is, um, you could say it's kind of superficial, right? It's very conditioned in, in a way. They're true, those answers are all true, but we have this sense that they're maybe not very deep, right? <clears throat> so we can go, you know, we can go deeper. Um, who am I? You know, I'm a human being. I'm aspired to teach people certain things, to learn certain things, um, to accomplish something in my life. It's deeper, you know, deeper than labels, right? Why did, why did you come here? Well, to reduce suffering, to learn the Dharma, right? It's deeper. So those are, those are true, those are deep, right? But then we get even deeper. And what this Dharma is telling us is that the deepest answer to these questions is, I don't know. At least that's the way we could verbalize that deepest answer, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. Okay, we can manifest that same non-knowing in different ways. We can manifest it with silence. Beautiful expression of non-knowing. And appears in many koans, in many exchanges throughout the Zen tradition. Silence. It could be manifested with a nonsense answer. or an answer that doesn't appear to make sense. I shouldn't say nonsense, but uh, something that appears, appears not to make sense. Who are you? Shit stick. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> Eating jelly beans. <laughs> Could be manifested with a 
slap in the face. Who are you? Could be a manifestation of non-knowing. <clears throat> and sometimes it's manifested and it takes the form, <coughs> excuse me, of the superficial answers. Who are you? Oh, I'm a teacher. <laughs> Why did you come here? It was announced on Meetup. Those answers can also be given really from the place of non-knowing. Okay. But the inner orientation to the question can be very different. And when, when you present a presentation to a koan, <clears throat> I can tell if you're coming from really not knowing or if you really, you're really uh, attached <laughs> to your answer. <laughs> you know, the details of your answer. Like this is the, this is the whole story right here. <coughs> so here are the questions, the, the questions, the version of the question, the who am I question that I wanted to appreciate a little bit more today. <clears throat> who am I with relation to my body? Who am I with relation to nature? Explore this, these a little bit more. Am I my body? Do I have this body? Or am I only this body? Is there something that has this body? Is there something more to me than this body? These are all great flavors of the who am I question. <clears throat> Blue Cliff Record, case 82, the physical body. A monk asked Dairyu, the physical body decomposes. What is the immutable reality body? Dairyu said, mountain flowers bloom like brocade, valley streams brim blue as indigo. So I've introduced these, these two other flavors of the who am I question. Who am I with relation to this body? Who am I with relation to uh, mountains, rivers, and sky? I would say nature, but we hear this word nature, and then we think something, and it nature's out there, and it's leaves, and it's streams, and it's sun, and it's that. You know, it's some, something different. So I don't like using the word nature, because it's almost like our, something turns off when we hear that sometimes. So, who am I with relation to mountains and streams, valleys, and sky? These are similar, these are related, these questions are related in our Zen understanding, our body and the one body, the body of the earth, the body of the universe. Okay. So, they sound like two, two different flavors of the question, but they're actually intimately connected flavors of the question, who am I? So appreciating this, this exchange a little bit and taking it in to our own practice. The monk is asking this question, the physical body decomposes, what is the immutable reality body? Okay, so he's, he's, when these accounts come to us, these monks are, they're asking questions of Dharma, you know, what, what does Buddha say about this? What do the scriptures say about this? But they, for, for, for anyone who's been practicing for a long time, it's a very close question. So you can imagine that this monk is coming from a place of uh, wrestling with the fact that his body is decomposing, right? There's a sense of mortality. There's a sense of suffering. There's a sense of impermanence, maybe pain or discomfort. I don't know, maybe he's, yeah, he's already lost. He's cut off his hair, so it's not like he's losing his hair, but he's failing perhaps, and certainly is close, close, close with his own mortality, with his own death. So this is coming from a place of this, there's this physical body decomposes, but what about the immutable reality body? So here he is referring to Buddhist uh, formal Dharma. So in our Mahayana Buddhist texts, the Buddha distinguishes between three bodies. 
the first is the Nirmanakaya, the Nirmanakaya, and that's the body that decomposes. It undergoes change and it dies. And this is the body, obviously, that we're all very familiar with, the Nirmanakaya. <clears throat> and there's also the Buddhakaya, or I'm, I'm sorry, the Dharmakaya, the Dharmakaya, <clears throat> which is the body that is the immutable reality body, the body of emptiness, the body of the absolute. <clears throat> so the monk is asking, what's, where's the gap? What's the distinction? And really more to the point, where's the immutable reality body? Because <laughs> I got the Nirmanakaya body. I got the decomposing body. So can you show me, can you give me, help me to discover and inhabit this immutable reality body? <clears throat> so maybe touch into that question yourself, you know, for a moment. And, uh, you know, own that question in your own life. Right? We, we all suffer in this body. And there's certainly something within us that wants to escape from pain and suffering, from death, right? We, we, get, we get escape, right? We, we have a lot of escape mechanisms, and we exercise them all the time. So I think we've got a good understanding of that. So I think it would be naive to say that we are not seeking escape from the pains of our body. It's very human to want that. <clears throat> And in fact, that's certainly informing the monk's question. Maybe we even have uh, similarly, but not quite the same, experiences of transcendence. Okay. Transcend the body, transcend conditions, you know, somehow take it up a level, whatever it might be. and maybe not get wrapped up in the details, in the particularities, in the grit. Maybe take the high road. Maybe take some drugs, go to a transcendent ecstatic state. Escape, transcendence, similar and different perhaps. So we can definitely see how this question can and often does come from a place of a desire for transcendence or escape. Right? It's not an innocuous question by any means. And it contains within itself the problem that the monk is asking about. The question is coming from this knowing mind. Ah, I've got the decomposing body over here and I've got the immutable reality body over here. There's two separate things. So those of you who've been studying or practicing Zen for any period, you know, realize that there's the problem right there, holding them out as separate things. You could say that this is knowing mind. This is, this is the knowingness that is um, structuring our experience and then causes us to seek certain things in a certain way and seek for a solution in a certain place. All right. Show them the imm immutable reality body that's different from the decomposing physical body, right? <clears throat> and that's the problem right there. <clears throat> so there's an interesting comment on this koan from a later teacher, but an ancient Zen teacher. And this was right on with respect to our theme here. 
and this master commented on this koan, if you want to attain intimacy, don't ask with questions. Why? Because the question is in the answer and the answer is in the question. They went on, this monk picked up a load of crudeness and exchanged it for a load of confusion. <laughs> The crudeness, decomposing body, reality body, immutable reality body. <laughs> what do you get in return? <laughs> Confusion. But if he really listened and really understood Daryu's response, he wouldn't be confused. And hopefully he did. <clears throat> the first line of the verse for this koan goes, asked without knowing, answered without understanding. <clears throat> so Dairyu, the master in this case, meets this question, this setup, with a really beautiful expression that just gets at the heart of what the monk is really concerned about and what we're concerned about. Who am I with relation to this body? Who am I with relation to mountains and rivers? Dairyu says, mountain flowers bloom like brocade, valley streams brim blue as indigo. You ask about your body and want to know these different categories of it and states of it, and I paint you a picture of the transient world. Beautiful, natural, intimate, Nothing fixed, shifting from color to color, from life form to life form. This is the very source of your joy and beauty and loss and pain. Right? This is the impermanent, the impermanent decomposing physical body. Mountain flowers blooming, valley streams brimming, constant flow. Right? The monk is fixating on the, let's say, the negative side of change and wants to separate the negative stuff from change without realizing that it's absolutely inextricable from everything beautiful, alive, joyous, pleasurable about change. From a, from a Dharma standpoint, like a straight up scriptural standpoint, you know, we'd say the two bodies are the same. They're the same. You can't separate them, right? So easier said than experienced. But it is said. It is said in the Dharma, right? And in fact, there's a third body that Buddha talked about the Nirmanakaya, there's the Dharmakaya, and then there's the Sambhogakaya, is the third body, which is considered the body of bliss, and that's the unification of the Dharmakaya and the Nirmanakaya. So a, a kind of a priestly, you know, answer would be, oh, they're the same, and here's the Sambhogakaya, and that's what that is. But he doesn't. He talks about mountains mountain flowers blooming and valley streams brimming blue. This wonderful image, this intimate image. So where is the separation? You know, where is the separation between your body and the world? What is there? Is there anything separate from 
your physical physical experience, something that transcends it. <clears throat> Zen practice is about fully living in your body and in nature. What I want to say is fully living as your body and as nature. <clears throat> living fully. Having a full experience. And I've, I've come to believe that our Zen practice, as, as, as it's practiced in, in America these days, doesn't have enough movement in it. Um, we, maybe we sit too much. Um, no, I, I take that back. We don't move enough. <laughs> I like how much we sit. <laughs> but we don't move, we don't do enough conscious movement. Yeah, to, to go along with the conscious stillness, the conscious stillness. So it can get a little bit out of balance. So I actually encourage everyone to really focus on mindfulness in conscious awareness of the body with all of the physical activity you do. Whether it's, not a, whether, whether it's a contemplative practice like a yoga or a tai chi or a qigong, or if not, if it's, if it's everyday movement and activity, the raking, the sweeping, the washing dishes, all of this, bring the same intensity that you bring to your zazen to these activities. <clears throat> Even more wonderful if you can do it in, in, a, in a kind of a liberated way, like a dance practice, a conscious dance or a conscious movement practice that can really open up for liberation, freedom, and joy. Really allow that to come through and nurture you. And that's intimacy. That's where the intimacy comes in. I'm practicing directly with the body, directly with nature. Just sitting and watching, watching the creek go by is everything. There's no better meditation. You know, so ask ask the question in the right way. You know that's that's what I'm I'm hoping to help you orient here towards. You know to ask the question in the in the right way. This this monk, um, although he he had some awareness, he um, he wasn't asking the question in the right way. You know it was for, it was from a knowing mind. So we investigate non knowing. You know, not from that place of understanding, trying to understand things, let alone control them. Not trying to understand them, but trying, wanting to feel them, experience them. And experience the rising and the persistence and the falling away of sensation, of experience. Surrender to that. Surrender to that in your physical life, daily life. Surrender to that in the world. And that's, that's the way to practice non-knowing. And that will produce intimacy of yourself and become more and more intimate with yourself. Okay, let's practice that. <laughs> Thank you.